I'm 67. I'm in very good health. Um, you know, very good blood pressure, whole food, plant-based for a decade. But my uh, homocysteine is around 12. My C-reactive protein is around 2.2. And I'm just curious if you have any suggestions. Yeah. And so it's a good point you make, uh, being whole food, plant-based, you know, the homocysteine levels, you know, sometimes, you know, if your B12 level is low, you may supplement B12 or things like that. Something, it could be something as simple as that. Um, but also, you know, microcirculation uh, problems could be there. And that's what I like to tell people to look at their diet. You know, how are you cooking your food? Where are you getting your food from? Because it's one thing to say you're whole food plant-based. We've seen lots of people come in and a whole food plant-based, you know, SOS, et cetera. Uh, but maybe they're microwaving most of their food or cooking most of their food. And maybe it's coming most from a supermarket that's getting from 2,000 miles away. It's set on the shelf for a while. And it's, you know, GMO, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it's coming from a can. Uh, maybe they're preservatives and things like that. So, you know, eating has become very tricky because, you know, our food system is tricky, at least the food that we're exposed to. Uh, is, is become abnormal. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of experts talking about, you know, issues related to food procurement and the like. Uh, but you have to be careful. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, you know, to be whole food plant-based and, and we're all in this situation. You know, but where does this come from? Uh, you know, are you getting adequate vitamin D levels? Uh, are you getting adequate sunshine and fresh air? So what you want to do is you want to sort of inspect every aspect of, of what you're doing. Uh, the food you're consuming, how you're preparing it, how you're procuring it, uh, you know, do you need supplements or there micronutrients that you're deficient in? Uh, if you see a functional medicine doctor or someone that can do a micronutrient test, uh, either through SpectraCell or Geneva we use here in Houston. Uh, and so there may be micronutrient deficiencies uh, that could be, you know, uh, heavy metal ex ex overexposure, which again, throws your biochemistry off a little, which may throw some of these things off. And so, so you just want to kind of say, I think what you're doing is great and congratulations on that. So you're probably more in a situation just fine tuning what you need to do. Excellent, <clears throat> excuse me, excellent. Thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> next we're gonna bring up Denise. Hi Denise, welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. That was such a fascinating presentation and I can't wait for that study. I'm wondering if you might tell us when you think some findings will be completed. But my question is a follow-up actually to several things you've just said. I actually am a whole food plant-based educator out of Tucson. And mm -hmm. sometimes I have students ask me this kind of question. Could I just buy the uh, powdered greens and will that do it for me? And so, you know, I I'm, I'm, would like to hear, you know, what you have to say about that. And it's kind of the powders of everything, the beet powders to this. I personally use amla powder, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I just would like to have a better understanding of how important it is it to eat the fresh beans uh, versus what we're going to buy from the grocery store that has been dehydrated and powdered. If you could share some of that, please. Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, it's um, and, you know, and I think, you know, it's, it's that type of question that we, we're looking at, because well, let me just kind of step back and make a few comments, because you know, if I, I want to answer that question in the context of, 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 of this you know, the a brief discussion, you know, when we look at how we have to manipulate our foods, you know, powders versus juices and smoothies, et cetera, you know, we're doing that in a context where we have a population of people who are very sick. I mean, you know, you may hear many of us go back and forth on smoothies, no smoothies, juices, no juices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and the argument uh, one can make is that you know, how should we normally eat in the normal state? You know, maybe, you know, we, if, if you go back to wherever, you know, people like to talk about hunter gatherers and all that stuff, uh, you know, people like to talk about cavemen and whatnot. But, but if you try to go back to some original state of how we should consume foods, I would say we should be some consuming foods uh, that are plant-based, that are found out in the woods, the forest, or wherever we find them. Uh, and we consume those foods as we find them. Uh, there are probably times when we're not eating, there are times when we're eating. And so there's probably a mixture of things that are going on. And so consumption of food is in the context of a lifestyle, you know, that's rooted back somewhere long before, you know, we were in modern civilization with, you know, TVs and computers or whatever. Uh, having said that, 
if you think about, okay, well, why powders or smoothies? You know, powders and smoothies are, are, are beneficial because they help make up for, for deficiencies. Many of us are not eating plant foods. Our GI systems are messed up. Or maybe you have poor dentition, whatever the case is. And so you may have to drink a smoothie or powder. We're so deficient in certain foods that we have to drink high concentrated smoothies and powders to help us catch up. And so smoothies and powders and these things are important uh, to the extent of our you know, deficiencies and, 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 and shortcomings and, and, and the need to catch up, if you will, or overcome a chronic. If somebody who's like the patient I presented, you know, I can't go out and give them a salad or have them have regular food, they're sick. And so, yeah, they need smoothies and powders. Now, as far as the students are concerned, you know, I'm thinking that they're not like these patients and so I would like to say, yeah, if you have some you know, Ill issue, chronic issue, cl uh, clinical issue or chronic illness, and you want smoothies and powders to supplement what you're doing, I think that's beneficial. Uh, and maybe many of us need it because we live in this you know, world where our food is contaminated. So maybe we'll benefit from supplementation or a superfood enhancement. Uh, but to say to just have powders, I, I, I don't think that's ideal. I mean, personally, I wouldn't want to just consume smoothies and powders. I like to eat whole salads. And, you know, in our chef, we make, you know, gourmet wraps and salads and raw pizzas and things like that, the foods that I'm kind of familiar with. So I think you should consume foods in a variety of contexts uh, and a variety of foods uh, that way. Uh, I think the powders are beneficial. I think I tend to think of them as an adjunct to your diet, not the whole diet. It can be pretty boring just drinking a glass of powders and smoothies, unless they're saying, well, I want to eat junk food and then have powders. If you want to eat junk food and have powders, that doesn't work. Um, my, my concept is, you know, we have a saying, not a bite, not a drop, not a crumb. Uh, we're talking to patients about counseling on how well to eat. Uh, it's really the abstinence of the bad food that's most important, not just the eating of healthy foods. The, 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 the least healthy eater in the world probably you know, lets a piece of spinach or broccoli slip past their tongue every now and then. Uh, but, but, you know, and nobody has, a few people, I should say, have trouble eating healthy food every now and then. It's just a total absence of the bad stuff. So if they're saying just the powders and as your healthy food and eat the junk food, I'll say no to that. Powders, beet powders, whatever, should be an adjunct to normal, healthy, uh, plant-based diet, in my opinion. <music>